Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Mike, and today I will show you our tool to how to automate the deployment of OpenStack, and I'm going to show how we do it. So before that, let me uh, tell you how we did it before. So previously, uh, we were like first time touching OpenStack, trying to manually deploy it. It takes time and a lot of debugging stuff. Okay, then we wrote scripts, bash scripts, to automate that, and it worked good. However, it was still a uh, very complex configuration. Then we took Chef and Puppet and wrote models for Puppet and wrote cookbooks for Chef, and it is still complicated. And uh, moreover, you have to like provision your nodes first of all, and then install Chef in it, and then run Chef in it. So uh, now we come up with a tool which has a web UI and does all the provisioning of your nodes and then fully automates uh, the deployment of OpenStack. And let me just show it. So um, not to waste the time, um, I just pre-installed the admin node for and the few web. Um, the way to install it is just you take an ISO, put on the memory stick, just go to the server, install it on the server, boot the server from it, and then you get this on the screen. As you see here, few web UI is available at this URL. Then you go here, you see nice UI like this. Little notification here that the master node has been installed. What you do next, is you just go to your data center and just power on other nodes, which must be on the same L2 network. And they're gonna boot over PXE from the admin node where we got uh, DHCP server is running and uh, TFTP and all that PXE kind of stuff. So to automate that with VirtualBox, I've got a script here. Let me just run it. Screen up, uh, th this script actually spins up a few VMs which I'm gonna use for the OpenStack installation. While it's booting, let me show you what I've got here. So um, our tool supports multiple environments of OpenStack. Let's create one of them. Yeah, and by the way, uh, Grizzly is supported, uh, proof of concept of Grizzly in a simple mod, and we got a Folsom release, uh, fully featured, supported, um, and stable one. So the Grizzly is not stable yet, however, we are working on it. Okay, so first of all, let me browse some tabs while uh, the discovery Linux image is still booting. So you can, uh, choose the deployment mode. We support a uh, simple mode when you got only one OpenStack controller and multiple compute nodes. And we support HA mode, where uh, you are getting production grade OpenStack environment uh, with HA support, supported. So um, for the type of deployment, you can just use only computes, or if you need Cinder, additional block storage, you just go with compute with Cinder. Let's go for a simple mode because this laptop is not that powerful that I cannot spin up a lot of VMs on it. Okay, so um, network settings looks like this. Uh, you can specify your network ranges for each network. Uh, it supports right now flat DHCP and VLAN managers, and quantum support is coming. And we got a nice feature here uh, for network verification. When uh, we can send traffic from one node to another, like every node sends traffic to any node, and uh, on the other end we receive the traffic, and that's how we understand the uh, interconnectivity between nodes on each VLAN. By the way, you see little notifications here on the upper right of the screen. It's about the new nodes discovered. 
You can click on it and get the information about the hardware we got on the node. Then we got a tab where you can modify OpenStack settings. So some examples here is choose hypervisor type or you can uh, send uh, your logging to some other server in your infrastructure. You can choose scheduler and some other options. So what we have discovered is missing in uh, other tools is um, to understand what's going on if something goes wrong. So for that, we built a special tab where we can see all the logs of our installation. So for example, you can see the logs from, uh, from our view web itself. And then, let me add some nodes. We add them like this. Yeah, let's choose without Cinder right now. So you can check any other log from remote systems and see what's going on there. Everything is on admin node so you can, you can get access to it. So for network verification, I can just click verify networks and it will verify it in, a, uh, in about a minute. And then in case of something wrong, it shows a table where you can see the node and the, uh, what VLAN is not coming to the node. Okay, let's go and uh, start deployment. When I click on deployment changes and uh, deployment is started, nodes are actually rebooted and then they're gonna load a CentOS system from the, uh, from the admin node. So it's gonna be uh, installed on the slave nodes. And you see CentOS 6.3 is uh, installing here. So it's gonna take a while. Uh, meanwhile, let me show what we can do else. Um, so here in actions tab, uh, we can rename environment or delete environment. Deleting actually means that you can uh, wipe out master boot record from the, your servers and reboot the server, and then it will load your uh, default uh, discovery system. And these nodes will appear again as unallocated. You see here on the upper right screen. So um, it takes some time to install and I've got a second laptop where I have everything installed. Let's just switch to another environment so I can show you how it looks like when it's done. Okay. So when it is done, um, you can see um, nice notification here and um, URL where you can access Horizon. So it is simple as is. You can get to the dashboard. And some other feature I didn't show you yet is configuration of disks. So um, on the real hardware, you're gonna get your multiple disks, you're gonna get a multiple physical networks, physical uh, NICs on your server, and you need to configure all that. Um, so for disks, we created this, where you can um, allocate whatever you want for uh, your base operating system, for Cinder volumes, or for virtual machines disks. Okay, so um, the feature for physical NICs configuration is coming, and I hope it's gonna be in the nearest months or even less. So um, here you see two environments, by the way. If you click on support, you can see here contact support, and uh, you will be redirected to our Zendesk system and ask any questions you got so far, and download logs if 
um, you want to attach the logs to your Zendesk uh, request. It will simplify the, the work on uh, digging up the issues you got with this installation. So um, that's pretty much it. You can install your OpenStack environment um, in a very fast way, not, not digging any, not, not modifying any like configuration files manually, everything in web UI. And it's as simple as this. By the way, if you um, look at that environment which is installing right now, if you go back, so you see here that we have got a nice progress bar showing like how many percentage is already installed and how, how much is remained. And um, you can click on logs and you'll be automatically redirected to Anaconda log if you are provisioning the system or to a puppet log if um, the deployment OpenStack is in progress. So that's it for now. Any questions so far? You can go to fuel.mirantis.com and find it there. What? There we go. Plans for what? SAN support? OK. So yeah, right now we support only Cinder commodity hardware like logical volumes in it. And um, SAN support is also coming. It's not going to be hard to create. We need to modify uh, the few library to support it and add uh, this into our UI. Sure. Can you repeat the question? I don't hear really well here. Hey, David, can you repeat that? Yeah. Okay, so we got a few library, which is a set of puppet models, and we and we built a orchestration layer and the web UI on top of it. So uh, we got it separately fuel ISO, and we got separately fuel web ISO. So you probably downloaded just fuel. That's my guess is, and if. So, if you. If you want to try it out, you can go here. If you don't see few web, let me know. I will make it for you, definitely. My name is Mike Sherbakov, msherbakov at mirances.com. Ray, what? OK, you can, you can uh, wipe them out. So I mean, yeah, you can delete them. Yeah, where is it? Let me show. You can just go here. Oh, when the installation is done, right now I cannot do this. But when the installation is done, you can click on delete, choose the node, it's wiped out, reboot it, and uh, slow that with default uh, system, discovery system, and then you just you know assign the other role into it, and that's it. It will be rediscovered automatically because you know its master boot record is wiped out. And then it tries to pick C boot, and for that node, um, it will be you know just a discovery image which will be fitted by uh, cobbler. So it will, it will load the discovery system and again send the information about itself to the admin node. Um, say it again. Yeah. Yeah, but I think it's uh, for some reasons. Uh, so well, so you may you know uh, power off your node and then, for example, take out some disks or some network cards, and that's why we need rediscovery. And anyway, we are uh, we have agent running on the each node, so it's sending all the time information about the hardware. So if you change anything, we're gonna know about it. Why?
Um, so, okay, so uh, we need to, for example, we need to uh, create a rate con software rate, for example, configure it, and then uh, w before we configure the rate, we have to know about the hardware, right? So we have to like know it in advance. So yeah, so that's why we need to like some fast discovering mechanism to configure it and then use it. And and again, um, so f right now we can install only on CentOS, and we support only CentOS and Fuel Web. Fuel Library we support Ubuntu as well. However, it is like limited version uh, of what Fuel Library provides. So uh, in the future, it can be possible to install not only on CentOS but also on Ubuntu. Any other questions? HA? Okay, we got a clustered rabbit. Um, we got a galera to do the, um, in, to do the, um, yeah, MySQL galera. And um, what else? HA proxy and keep alive uh, to manage all that kind of stuff. <laughs> 